the Sneds quite rightly said there, he gave me Working All The Time by Zania Rubinos. Um, not too sure of its release date. I think it was the 13th of July. Um, all the singles seem to have been like taken out of Spotify and just left the album in, but I think it was, I think it was the 13th of July as Aye. far as I could well, figure out. I watched the music video and it certainly was dated like sometime in July. Um, yeah. It's quite a short song. It's only kind of two minutes long. Yeah. Um, so really short lived. You know, it's it's kind of it starts and and finishes finishes fairly quickly. But by God, does it pack a punch? There, there's a lot in there. Yeah. It features as kind of track number four in our latest studio album. Una Rosa, uh, which is our third studio album to date. As Sneds was saying, Zanaya is an American singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist. According to our Bandcamp page, she takes her sound from a wide palette of influences ranging from Caribbean rhythms and beat music to minimalist and indie rock influences and serves and serves it up in a beautifully delicious and soulful punk aura, which I think is a pretty app description if indeed this music can be described or defined or categorized you know i think it kind of defies explanation or categorization as with a lot of the the kind of songs that we cover or a lot of the music that we cover i've kind of described it as opening with this almost kind of stuttering almost jarring electronic trills and flourishes which is kind of juxtaposed with wordless yet really soulful vocalizations from zanaya um, before she actually starts singing slash rapping at around the kind of 10 second mark. I found it interesting that her kind of lyrics and her vocals um, almost mimic those kind of stuttering electronics um, as if they were kind of stuck in some sort of loop. She kind of repeats the odd word here and there. And f- for my money, it kind of felt as if it was kind of mimicking you know, what was happening with regards to the kind of instrumentation. Then at around the kind of 40 second mark, the song kind of morphs into this almost 80s electro-pop synth soundscape, which for me sounded kind of almost reminiscent of a Gerfer Geist's you know, Parasites or kind of that kind of Blade Runner feel to it. And then, you know, we've got this kind of pre-chorus, which is kind of really quite good, really quite engaging. There's this kind of vocal refrain of I'm working all the time. Um, but as I said, there's so much depth and texture to it. I mean, there, there's male vocals in there. There's an air horn that goes off <laughs> at, at one point. And it is that proper, what I think has now became that kind of comedy air horn. I'm not going to try and do it because I've tried to do it when I was explaining it to Kerry and I just, I don't know what. It's, wah, like, wah, wah. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not even, it's not even close. Yeah, I can't do it, man. Like, But you know what I'm talking about when I kind of talk about that kind of almost comedic, you know, air horn sound that that's that's in there. It's a um, it's like a it's like a trope of like a certain kind of hip hop as well. Aye, there's like I've described it as another female vocalist rapping in there as well. It sounds almost kind of childlike. It kind of reminded me a bit of Yolandi Visser from Die Antwoord a wee bit. I wondered if it was just her, her own vocals. It could very well be. like like modulated. With some sort of auto tune kind of thing, and just changing the pitch of it, possibly. Aye, aye, it, it could very well be. I certainly think that kind of pre chorus chorus section really stands out as part of the track. Yeah, I really, yeah. really enjoyed it. The video is really fun as well. If you were to watch the music video on YouTube or wherever else you, you kind of choose to watch it, particularly during that kind of pre chorus bit, which she kind of segues into by going like, Ah, and then like you know the, the kind of the, the pre-chorus chorus thing starts up um there's this character kind of dressed in a kind of blue suit who's just kind of like firing money at her. <laughs> um it's it's really quite cool he's actually got like a a gun as well like she's just kind of like napping at one scene she's kind of napping underneath a tree um and then like he comes up behind her with this gun that's just kind of firing money at her um and then again, the, the kind of outro to the song just comes out of left field yet again with this kind of Latin American feel to it, which, you know, was another really enjoyable moment in the track as well. On the album, I think this song comes directly before a song called Sacuda, Sacuda or something. And I think that last bit kind of segues quite well into that ne- that next track. Yeah. Um. But it. But even just as a standalone song, it's 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 a really kind of interesting, 
ending to the song. I mean, that, this song's like, I'd, I'd never heard of Zanaya Rubin else before, and I'm not really sure where I've, or how I first heard this song, but, but it kind of just immediately struck a chord with me because of how weird, weird it is. And it's got that kind of, like, her vocals are almost like, 90s early noughties kind of r&b like yeah sort of like I've, I've kind of mentioned destiny's child here and there's that kind of style of singing in her in her in her vocals and uh like you said there's those kind of awkward blasts of air horn and and sort of grimy hip-hop beats and and off kilter electronics that come in and i i just always amazed when when artists can take all these sort of disparate elements and somehow make them into something cohesive because on paper it should be a complete disaster but but somehow they managed to to make it all work together in a really interesting way she's an interesting artist Ned. Like, i don't know if you kind of went back and you know listened to some of her back catalog but she's got one song called it's either called i think it's called world whirlwind and it's basically just her and a drummer She's not even singing. She's just using kind of like vocalizations. Um, yeah. But it works in a really interesting. It works. It works. You know, and as you said, you know, you, you wouldn't expect these things. To, you know, if they were down in paper, you wouldn't expect these things to to kind of pan out. But somehow she she manages it. Well, there's a there's a really good song from the album. Uh, it's called "Don't Put Me in Red," and the the, the opening of that song is basically, it's like vocal warm up. It's like she's doing a vocal warm up exercises, um. So it is just like these vocalizations, and it goes on for ages, and it it goes on almost too long, and then it kind of goes into this really sad, like really affecting, quite emotional song, and it, it's really really good. But um, yeah, just even doing something like that is is really quite impressive. The, the, the you know the sort of audacity of just being like, oh, I'm just gonna do a sort of vocal yeah. warm-up exercise to begin this song is is quite it's quite clever i like on 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 um working all the time where it moves into that section where you've got the air horns and stuff you've got this sort of unknown rapper comes in and he starts shouting keeping it 100 and like yeah. you're expecting it then to do that kind of old trope where you know a female pop singer brings in like a male rapper to do like the chorus or whatever but he gets that one line and then it's just like she's like nah i'm gonna do this myself and she she raps of course instead or at least it's definitely female vocals i think it's yeah. probably her her own modulated vocals I, I just like that it, it almost takes that trope and turns, know, it on its head. turns it on its head so re- really cool song um and it's, it's doing something that reminds me a lot of there's an album that came out in 2018 um, called Virtue by a band called The Voids. And it's an album I was really obsessed with at the time. And it's basically, it takes like indie from the noughties and then experiments it in, with it in similar ways that Zanaya Rubinos does here with like pop music and, and hip hop in that it sort of adds in these weird 80s elements and electronics and modulated vocals and all sorts of stuff. So I, this seems to be a thing that I like. <laughs> for for whatever reason and yeah i just thought yeah that's why i gave you this i thought it was a really interesting thing to to talk about no i i really enjoyed it um i mean i've given it a rating of kind of a seven or eight out of ten yeah i've given it an eight um but i can totally see why people would absolutely hate this as well like there'd be a lot of people who'd just be like what what is this but if you're open if you're open to to more interesting music then you'll definitely get something out of it and uh when i said before that there was another album that i just kind of missed out of our, our favorite albums it was it was una rosa and mainly because i i just didn't give it enough time to be able to justify putting it in but it is a very very good album a lot of interesting stuff on there okay so that was working all the time by zanaya rubinos <laughs> I'm just a leper, I don't want to fight But you keep putting me in cages every day and night And it was my day
finished. It's finished.